Hello brides and grooms. Here is something that I think a lot of brides and grooms forget about. So I shot a wedding yesterday and it was a Vietnamese wedding. It was massive. There was over 400 guests there. I usually shoot Persian, Afghan, and Indian weddings, and sometimes they get quite large too. Usually they're about 150 to 250. Sometimes we've seen it go five, 600 as well. What brides and grooms forget to do is plan on how to take photos with their guests. So if we take a Persian wedding, for example, the close family comes to the bride and groom after the ceremony and they take their photos at the actual sofre where the ceremony ends, assuming there's a sofre. If not, they take it there anyway. We usually have combinations with mom, dad, siblings, and grandparents at the sofre. We may get cousins, aunts, and uncles as well, but that's about it because we have to save time for the bride and groom to go take pictures, uh, usually for a sunset. Now, for other weddings, there is still a ceremony and there is still some time after the ceremony to take photos, but not for hundreds, not for that many people, just usually for close relatives. This was the same for the Vietnamese wedding. What they actually did was they had a step and repeat, which is kind of like a backdrop set up at the entrance. So for when guests come in, this was during the reception, when guests come in, they can take photos with the bride and groom, which was an absolute amazing idea and amazing thing that the bride and groom agreed to. So when they do this, they can take photos with all the guests, and it does take quite a bit of time, can take 45 minutes to an hour for when the guests arrive to take photos with their bride and groom, but then they're done. Previously, what we would do, at least for Persian weddings or Afghan weddings or Indian weddings, is we would go table to table. And the reason we'd go table to table is because the bride and groom had perhaps not planned thoroughly enough on when to take photos with the guest because they still wanted photos with each group of people that came with each table. And to do that, we'd have to go table to table, usually during dinner or right after dinner, and either ask people to stand up or the bride would, bride and groom would go to one section of the table and everybody would come around it and they'd take photos. If it was a smaller wedding, I'd invite them to come to the dance floor because there's more room there and people can get nice and close together and we can knock out a bigger group at a time, meaning we can do a whole table of 10 versus doing one on this side of the table with five, one on the other side of the table with five, and it just takes longer. So what I think uh, brides and grooms forget about is how to plan their guests taking photos because sometimes they don't want photos with the guests. So if you're one of those who doesn't want to take photos with every table or every guest that comes, then you can avoid these and you're solid, you can go. But if you want these photos, if you wanna take time to take photos with your guests, you have to decide, should you get a step and repeat, put it in the front of the wedding so when people come in during the reception, you can take it there, or do you want to go table to table? Do you want to pull people on the dance floor? Because all of these are going to be cutting into time. If you do it a step and repeat, it's cutting into the grand entrance time. So you're not going to have a grand entrance. People are seeing you already there, so it's not very special. If you go table to table, then you're taking time away from dinner, and sometimes people are eating, and you're not going to have time to eat yourself. Uh, it can get a little hectic. If you want to do this in a separate time, then you might have to actually cut out table uh, photos altogether during cocktail hour, and go to cocktail hour to take photos with your guests there. And sometimes brides and grooms opt for this, but again, you're not having a magical grand entrance from the time you had your ceremony to the reception area because they're seeing you at cocktail hour. So it depends what's important to you. It depends how you wanna go about this to basically make it as magical as you want, but also to get the type of shots that you want with your guests, whether it's posed ones, candid ones, do you wanna hit every single guest? Or are you comfortable just doing parents and grandparents and maybe aunts, uncles, and cousins? And you can usually take care of that right after the ceremony. You don't need all 200, 400, 600 guests um, to come do that. You're not going to have time to do that. So think about that when you're planning your wedding. What's important to you and how do you want to go about this? And let your planner know and let your photographer know so everybody's on the same page.